Lord Alton of Liverpool. My Lord, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. <laughs> my Lords, <coughs> the International Criminal Court relies entirely on state cooperation to ensure enforcement of its arrest warrants. The British Government, together with our EU partners, frequently raises the importance of states fulfilling their international obligations and taking the necessary steps to bring, justice, to, bring to justice individuals indicted by the court. Those currently fugitive from ICC warrants should be reminded that they, like Radovan Karadzic and General Mladic, cannot evade indefinitely the international justice system. Mm. My Lords, given that Kony was indicted in 2005 and that Omar al-Bashir, who was indicted in 2009 for crimes against humanity in Darfur, is now waging a new war against his own people in South Kordofan, doesn't a failure to bring those indicted to account risk compromising the ICC and bringing it into disrepute? My Lords, can the Noble Lord the Minister say what resources we are committing to the work of the ICC and say when a head of state is indicted by them, how that is reflected in the conduct of our economic and diplomatic policies. My Lords, either this is genocide, either it's crimes against humanity or it's not, <coughs> either they're indicted or they're not, either it's business as usual or it's not. Well, it certainly isn't business as usual. I think uh, the uh, noble lord who follows these things very closely uh, is perhaps not taking into account that this is a system that has taken some years to get going. The indictments are out, but there are real problems to uh, pinning them down. Uh, he mentioned two cases. We know uh, that uh, Mr. Joseph Kony is highly elusive and can slip across borders. At least the government of Uganda has been very successful in capturing his uh, deputy, Caesar Asalam, the other day, and Uganda is a signatory to the ICC, and I'm sure they will fulfill their obligations in accordance with international justice. As for the, uh, um, the leader of, uh, of, of, Khartou, of, of Sudan, um, we know exactly what the position is. We, we seek to keep contact with Khartoum because all the parties, South, South Sudan, Sudan itself and the opposition parties believe that we should keep close to the, and indeed the opposition as well believe we should keep contact and we do so with EU colleagues. But the problem of, of uh, pinning an ICC charge or securing, fulfilling an ICC charge against um, Mr. Uh, Omar al-Bashir is obviously a practical physical one, that he is not in reach unless he were to leave the country. My, my noble friend will be aware that um, since I think April, uh, when uh, Bosco Nutaganda's rebel troops um, also defected in that country, uh, they've managed to forcibly recruit over 150 uh, child soldiers and cause 40,000 villagers to flee. Uh, so more chaos on that region. Now, the point I want to raise my noble, my, my noble friend, with my noble friend is that the United Nations Security Council is absolutely clear with its mandate for its mission in the, the Congo, MONUSCO, they have the authority to assist the, the, the government to uh, arrest uh, indicted war criminals. And yet on the ground, the officials in MONUSCO are saying uh, they haven't been asked to do anything and they're not involved. Yet the ICC officials, the ICC officials have actually asked the government to pursue it and nothing's happened. I mean, it really is prevarication overall. Well, it, I mean, it's very difficult to ascertain exactly what is happening on the ground, and, and no one could expect there to be full uh, information or full access and, or details. But certainly, as far as the uh, ICC uh, are concerned in bringing, for instance, um, uh, Bosco and, and Tango to justice um, and supporting uh, additional charges against Bosco, we are in full support and we support the work of the ICC. I think the implication of both my noble friend's question and the one before is that somehow the ICC should have further powers uh, over and above the existing situation in which national governments are seek have to seek to cooperate and take the initial action. That, of course, would raise fundamental questions about the whole workings of the ICC and to whether we should go back to square one and revise the legislation. I don't believe we should. I think we should give the present process uh, more scope and more encouragement. But I understand what is behind my noble friend's question.
My Lord. Uh, since crimes against humanity are defined by the United Nations as a widespread attack on a civilian population, does the Minister not agree with me that Robert Mugabe should be investigated by the prosecutor and subsequently indicted by the ICC? Is it not tragically clear that there is evidence of his responsibility for the Mat Matabele land massacres in the 80s committed by his army brigade, continual state-sponsored violence against political opponents and ongoing atrocities in the diamond fields in Zimbabwe? What pressure is Her Majesty's Government using to ensure that this wicked man faces international criminal justice? Well, I, I personally don't dispute anything that the uh, noble Baroness has said with her uh, acute uh, understanding of the situation there. But the realities are these, that Zimbabwe is not uh, a party to the Rome Statute, um, and that uh, to get uh, ICC charge against Mr Mugabe would require the UN, Secur UN Security Council resolution. And that means getting past all five of the permanent members. And we know what some of the permanent members' view is, that they shouldn't uh, take such action. So until we can get past the, uh, this problem, of the, uh, the permanent five, and particularly the reluctance of uh, China and Russia to name two to see these uh, uh, matters taken up by the UN and therefore remitted to the ICC for charges. Until we can get past that barrier, um, these uh, people, which she mentions Mr Mugabe as one, who we find uh, uh, people who have clearly committed most unsavoury acts um, outside the reach of the ICC. My Lord, is the noble Lord the Minister aware that not only is President al-Bashir indicted by the ICC, but he's actually deposed the elected governor of Southern Kordofan, Ahmed Haroun, who is also indicted by the ICC, who has since been carrying out systematic slaughter, error and bombardment of his people with the displacement of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands. Could I ask the noble Lord the Minister what reassurance Her Majesty's Government can give to the victims of those policies? Speaking to people in the refugee camps, and I'm afraid this sounds harsh, but many have said to me, why does Britain not intervene? Our suffering is far worse than that of Libya. Does Britain really only do justice or do business with Khartoum and those indicted by the ICC? My Lord, that is the feeling amongst many people in Sudan. I think, with respect to the noble Baroness, that, that, that is unfair because she knows better than most of us what the real problem is. The real problem is access. We cannot get access to these very ugly areas, these very difficult areas, uh, to establish what is happening. She mentions that the, she's quite right, the, uh, uh, the governor of Cordoban and uh, one other are already indicted by the ICC. Uh, they need to face justice. Uh, if we could uh, uh, establish, uh, the UN has ruled through the Security Council that they should face justice, uh, that, that they should be referred to the ICC, and the ICC has issued warrants against them. So the question comes how can they be secured, how can they be brought to justice, brought to The Hague? And that remains a continuous battle. As for the general proposition that we only speak to Khartoum or to uh, Juba, that I think is not to understand the enormous amount of work we are doing at every level with the international agencies to bring some hope to this very unpleasant and ugly situation. Lord Story. I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. 